Lesson 14 talks about the basic concept of equilibrium. Watch that video first if you have not seen it yet. In this lesson, we'll continue with equilibrium and talk about the reaction quotient. We will also give you more tools for handling typical ICE calculations. Let's take an example. A plus B going to 2C with a K of 2.2. First, we write down the equilibrium expression, K equals C squared divided by A divided by B. For this equilibrium, we are going to look at three different initial reaction mixtures and show you how to set up the ICE calculation and use the reaction quotient Q to predict the direction of the reaction. One, Let's say you start with a reaction mixture with 0.1 molar of A, 0.2 molar of B, and 0.3 molar of C. You can set up the ICE table like this. In the first row, we put down the initial concentrations. In the second row, we represent the changes using an unknown. And in the third row, we put down the equilibrium concentration by applying the changes to the initials. But before we enter the changes, it is always a good idea to try to find out which direction the reaction will go to reach equilibrium. For this, a device called the reaction quotient is useful. The reaction quotient Q is defined just like the equilibrium constant K, but instead of the equilibrium concentrations, Q is defined with the initial concentrations. So we see that Q is equal to 0.3 squared divided by 0.1 divided by 0.2. The value of Q for this set of initial conditions is therefore 4.5. By comparing Q against K, we can determine which direction the reaction will go in order to reach equilibrium. If Q is smaller than K, the reaction will move right. If Q is larger than K, the reaction will move left. If Q happens to be equal to K, then the reaction is already at equilibrium. A simple way to remember this is to draw a number line to represent the position of Q relative to K. K is 2.2, Q is 4.5, so the reaction will have to move backward to reach equilibrium. Since the reaction moves backwards, products must be destroyed and reactants are produced. So the changes on the product side are all negative, while the changes on the reactant side must all be positive. Now we can represent the changes in terms of an unknown y. Remember that to enforce the stoichiometry of the reaction, we just transfer the stoichiometric coefficient of each species down and put it in front of y. You can apply the changes to the initials and write down the equilibrium concentrations in terms of the unknown y and put those back into the expression for k. If you multiply out all the factors, you see that on the top, the highest power of y is 2. The same thing is true for the bottom. In general, the highest power you will get is just the number of factors of concentrations you need to multiply together to get the expression for k. So on the top, we have c squared, and the highest power of y must be 2. On the bottom, we have a times b, so the highest power is also 2. We can multiply everything out and solve this using the quadratic formula. The video solutions has many examples of this. We'll just write down the solutions here. If you use the quadratic formula, you would get two answers, 1.0 or 0 0.025. 1.0 0 can't be right because this will give a negative equilibrium concentration for C. So 0 0.025 is the right answer. 2. Next, we will start with a different initial reaction mixture to illustrate another useful idea. This time, we will take 0.1 molar of both A and B, but no C initially, and we set up the ICE table as usual. For the changes, it is obvious that the reaction has to move right, because there's no product initially, so the concentrations of A and B have to go down, and the concentration of C has to go up. If you had calculated Q, you would see that it is zero, and so it is indeed less than K, and the reaction should go to the right. The natural choice for the changes would have been minus Y, minus Y, and plus 2Y. 
But instead of this, we'll deliberately pick the opposite sign to show you what will happen. At the end, you'll see that as long as the signs of the changes of the reactant side is opposite to the signs on the right, the equilibrium calculation will always give you the correct answer at the end. So if you do everything right, you can actually bypass the calculation of Q. Just set all the signs on the left to be positive and all the signs on the right to be negative. Pull the stoichiometric coefficients down from the balanced equation. Apply the changes to the initials. And put these back into the expression for K. We take the square root of both sides and solve for y. y comes out to be minus 0 0.043. So as expected, this answer tells us that the changes in the reactant concentrations, y, are actually negative. 3. Finally, we take one last example. This time, A and B are initially 0, and C is 1 molar. We set up the ICE table. This time, we bypass Q entirely, and just put in minus Y, minus Y, and plus 2Y for the changes. Remember that as long as the changes on the product side have the opposite sign to those on the reactant side, it's OK. So apply the changes to the initials, we get minus y, minus y, and 1 plus 2y. And we put these into k. Taking the square root of both sides, we get 1 minus 2y over negative y equals 1.48. And y comes out to be equal to negative 0.287. Again, this tells us that even though the sign for the change in the C concentration in front of Y is positive, the product actually decreases. We know that this is indeed correct since we started with no reactants initially. But remember, even though it is possible to carry out the equilibrium calculation without knowing the actual direction of the changes, computing Q first is generally a good idea. This will give you a sense of what is the sign of Y to expect for the answer. If you get a sign different from what you expect, that's a reality check to signal that something might have gone wrong in your calculations.